lay down. <coughs> okay, in this video, I'm going to destroy the globe three times with the same observation. This is an observation made about three years ago, back in 2021, in Blackpool. This is an observation for some reason or another. Our opposition <laughs> thought somehow proved the globe. It's like, you want to be completely crazy. But anyway, look, <clears throat> that's what we're dealing with, to even say something like that. But hey, this is what we're dealing with. We're dealing with people with crazy ideas. So this absolutely proves the earth is flat without a doubt. And, but one, one of the main, most, one of the most standout things for uh, during that time uh, for me in the debate was the fact that those who first presented the photograph only presented a part photograph. They didn't show us this side over to the left at all. They presented it from about here or here over and they left out this part over here, which was very strange, but they did anyway. But that's what we're dealing with. We're dealing with people who are desperate. <clears throat> anyway, let's get stuck in. First way, right, that this absolutely proves without a shadow of a doubt that we're on a flat plane. First, day, first things first. The observer height uh, for this was about 1924. We'll say 24, right? This bank here, right? This bank here is like about, I think, 30 foot, something like that, right? So if we just go to tools, we'll just go to annotate and line, right? Point being is that for the observer, that's where the line line was, right? How And people go, might go, no, no, the line line is across the center of the screen. No, because they're 20 foot above, right, above this level here, right, this seabed, 20 foot above that, right, here is the line that's about 20 foot above that seabed, right, so their oil line is about there, this tower is 520 feet, excuse me, <coughs> excuse me, about 520 feet above the seabed, this is about 20 foot, maybe down here is actually, maybe, but we just put it here so you can see it, so that's about 20 foot, and make it actually a different colour, so it'll be more standout for well, that's not gonna work. Orange, right? Works good at orange. So that's the observer's viewer height. Why does the observer viewer height appear to slant down from the center of the screen? Because perspective exists. Like the tower is obviously a lot bigger than that and the mountains mountains, but due to angular size change, something that is not part of globe mathematics, it is it. Angular size change, visual occultation, optical drop, all these perspective effects are all hijacked. They're all omitted from global mathematics. So due to angular size change, that's where the observer's eye line actually is. Not up here across, right, one second, need this line. Not up here, right across the screen. Right, that's not where the oil line is. That where it is where it appears to be, but our actual oil line is down there. Right, so that's how you know that it's perspective. Straight away, perspective. We we nobody can deny that perspective exists. There you go. So the oil line is actually down there. That means everything in the distance is getting smaller with distance. Angular size change. Right, nobody can deny that. Yet. You, if you claim that the Earth is a globe, and you must use the mathematics that are claimed to be based on that globe, right, or for that globe, right, we all know that they came from flat plane measurements, but the point is that those, those mathematics, right, would have to account for angular size change, right, if they were anyway addressing reality. But, as I will show, here is Metabunk, geometric hidden, Geometric drop, geometric hidden, oh, sorry, geometric horizon, geometric drop, geometric hidden, geometric horizon dip. Geometric, none of that is optical. When you see the words geometric, none of that is optical. And even when they try and add in a 7 over 6, which is a complete farce, and greater than 7 over 6, none of that is optical either. Because because that's all based on, what I, what I mean by that is that, that's not based off of perspective, that's based off of claimed effects, right, within the air, Right? Um, but that's not the point. That's not refraction anyway. It's just mathematical that they make it up. They made it up. But the point being is that either of those are not optical. There's no where the where are the where is angular size change in any of this? It's not. No sign of it, right? So no matter what distance and what size you give to something, and what distance it, it is away, right? Here you have it. It's all going to be based off of off of this, right? This. 
none of this has anything to do with perspective. Yet, in reality, perspective exists. So first thing first is that due to the fact that the observer's oil line will be here, right? And if you're talking about the oil line, let's say we bring it over to the bottom of the mountains here, it's still not going to be here because at the bottom of the mountains, due to angular size change, it's going to be way down there. It's going to nearly appear at, and eventually it's going to just going to appear, appear to be at the surface level because those mountains there are hundreds of thousands of feet high. So 20 foot will be, so the, the observer's eye line over here is going to be down there. So that, due to angle, due to perspective, right? So this, the fact that perspective exists and it's omitted from our core mathematics, it's actually what is hijacked to, to create the mathematics, um, prove, and we because it exists, it proves, number one, Proof number one is that this proves a flat earth. Because if you add in perspective, right, and our core, if it doesn't work, it completely sits outside of reality. As I've shown before, with a six foot object floating all above the water, moving away from somebody who is off the right line at, 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 at zero degrees, and it floats away for three miles, um, you can't have our curve and, and, and angular size change. Because what will happen is, 1.8 miles away, that six foot object will disappear. But in reality, it takes three miles for that object to disappear, right? And it will disappear at three miles with our curve, or it will disappear with, at three miles with angular size change. So we know angular size change exists, so that means our curve is disqualified. So straight away, proof number one, perspective, right? If the earth was a globe, as they say, then perspective wouldn't exist. Perspective does exist, right? Because it's not a globe, <laughs> it's that simple. First, that's the first things first. Okay, <clears throat> second, right, I'm gonna go to here. Right, go down here a second. Second, okay. So here we have a tower, right, and a mountain. Right, I'm just gonna go, oh sorry, not that one. I get Google up, sorry about this. Tower and a mountain, okay. So, so the height of Deer Craig in feet. Deer Craig is 2,550 feet high, right? That's the average, right? I don't care if it's a bit more, a bit less, but that's what you're saying straight on Google, on Google Dale Craig, 2,550 feet. Blackpool Tower, 518 feet. Let's say 520, just to make it simple. So, right? So, right? 2550, that's 2,550 feet, which is the height of Dale Craig, right? And we divide that by um, 520. And that equals 4.9, right? So you could say that Dale Craig, uh, as a height uh, above sea level, is five times higher than Blackpool Tower, right? So <clears throat> here we have, let's just say we'll use this as Black, Blackpool Tower here, and this is Dale Craig. Now, Dale Craig here, let's just say that is about, about two, three, four, maybe it's not, let me make this a little bit bigger, right? Maybe that's about five or maybe that. Right, so one, two, three, four, five. That's about five, right? So let's just say that's the height of Dale Craig in comparison orthographically uh, to Blackpool Tower. Now, obviously, right, that would mean that the oil line would be hitting Dale Craig here at its lower hills, right? Now, we know that the oil line, right, when we're trying to look above Blackpool Tower, appears to go higher than Dale Craig in the distance. Whereas, as I showed earlier, right, this is where the observer, observer's oil line is at that distance away. It's about here, actually, right? Right. It's not up at the center of the screen like you, you, like you think it's going to be. It's going to be here, right? Because uh, if the observer was standing over here looking at that mound, uh, uh, that mound that's coming off up off the seabed, they'd be looking basically where the sea orange line is with the same elevation, right, as where they are. So. When we're viewing this, we're viewing this in perspective, right? So orthographically, when we right place the two side by side, it, if we don't add in angular size change, right, for the observer how they would view both, then what you're going to have is if I move this back, right, what you're going to have is if I move it back the exact amount, right. It's still going to, at some point, if I move back far as the exact distance it is from the observer and make everything here, move that exactly the distance away and do all, all the stuff, it's still, the observer's eye line will still appear to hit up here. But that's because it's an orthographic. You must show, right? Because the, the observer is not viewing things orthographically. 
the observer is viewing things prospectively. We're not viewing things autographically. As I showed down here, the eye line is going to be here. No, it won't be up here. That's not the observer's eye line, right? That's not the observer's eye line. It's actually here. That's what it actually is. It might appear to be here because everything has compressed and gotten smaller with distance, but it's not. It's actually down here, right? So we can't then autographically place a tower here and a mountain here and say, oh, look, the line of sight hits the mountain even with the tower and the mountain at a distance, right, from each other. No, because they're still, you, you're still using actual sizes here. We need to view them. If we're going to be in reality and we're going to be honest, we need to place both of them uh, in comparison to their angular sizes. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you what their angular sizes would be in comparison to each other, and then I'm going to make the mountain even bigger. Right? I'm going to show you something. So, <clears throat> so at a distance of about 51 miles, I think the, the mountain was 51 miles away, right? Um, and a height of 2,550 right? uh, feet, then that gives the mountain an angular size of 0 0.54 degrees, right? And for the tower at about six miles away, 31,680 feet distance, and a size of 520 feet, that gives the tower an angular size of 0 0.94 degrees. Now, that would mean that there's a 0.4 degree, that would mean that the, uh, the tower is 0.4 degrees uh, bigger in angular size or whatever, right? Um, than the mountain. Now we don't know, uh, as we can see here, we angular sizes, you've got to take into account uh, that it's purely mathematical and you, it, it, you're never going to have exacts when you're looking at a photograph that will fit angular sizes. And the reason you won't is because you're going to have all kinds of effects that will happen with temperature and air. Air that can make something appear higher or lower or whatever, right? You know, stooping, towering, uh, sinking, you know, or a mirage, all these things that mess with the uh, uh, mess with the view, right? But mathematically, there's about a 0.4 of a degree of a difference, right? So that would mean that <clears throat> if I just bring this back, wait one second now, bring this line of sight back, let's just say, right? Let's just say they're viewing the tower this size. If I bring this, make this mountain thing smaller, right? I just bring it over a bit so you can see it. Now, that would mean that the mountain would be this size for the observer in relation to the tower, right? There's the tower, there's the mountain, right? Now, if you take their angular sizes, right, uh, like they are shown there, then of course, then when the observer is looking, right, uh, towards the mountain in the distance, it's going to appear that they're looking uh, lower than the tower height. Because they say that they're viewing the tower as its angular size here, and the mountain in comparison to that tower is 0.4 degrees smaller. So, as you can see, the tower is going to appear bigger when it's not. It's actually not bigger. It just appears that way, right? But let's let's do it different. Let's like let's make the mountain twice the angular size of the tower, right? Let's just say the mountain was bigger. Let's say it's twice the angular size. Just make it bigger, right? Sorry even though it's not, right? Let's say it's twice the angular size of the tower. So even if it's twice the angular size of the tower, as you move it back, right, that's when it's right next to you. You don't have to move back only a, only a small bit, and suddenly you're viewing, to view the mountain, you have to look at it through the, what appears to be you're looking through the, to the top of the tower to see it. So when we make them smaller, more their actual angular size, right, isn't this, we're gonna see, well, maybe not that small, but maybe about that, right? We're going to see the top of the mountain look by look as if we're looking through the tower, right? That's what we're going to see. The observer is not going to see the mountain from in a perspective view. They're not going to see the mountain being shoot. Uh, they're not going to see the mountain being five times the size of the tower. They're not going to see that. They're going to see it be its angular size, which is about that, right? Right. That's what they're going to see. So what the observer sees in the photograph, right? Right, front on perspective, what the observer sees, remember this is where the right line is down here. What the observer sees is, is that, which their, this is their angular size. So as an angular size, when you compare the two angular sizes, right, together, right, um, then that's what they're gonna see. It makes total sense. You can't put it in orthographic, make this five times the height of this and expect the, the same observation to happen. 
it won't happen. That's their actual sizes. The observer is not seeing their actual sizes. They're seeing their angular sizes. Because if they were, if they were our actual sizes, then they'd be very small. Because this would mean if everything was if these everything was seen in its actual size, and everything was its actual, then this would be where the observer's eye, eye height is, and Blackpool Tower would be about 15 feet high. Now, this is a joke. This is where the observer's eye line is in reality, right? In comparison to the bank at the up, up above the seabed there. They're just about 20 foot above that seabed, right? This is, so what they're actually, when, you, when you compare, and this drove, this absolutely drove the ballers up the wall when I showed it last time. I got thousands of views and rage, and I know I'm going to get just as much, much and more, and I hope I get even more here. But this is what, right, we have to view, if we're going to show it, we have to show it, uh, we have to show it uh, in comparison to their angular sizes. Because the observer has not seen them in their actual sizes. It's seen them in their actual sizes. So, once again, proving a flat plane. Not only can, does perspective not exist within globe mathematics, it can't because it's what they hijacked, right? right? But when you put everything orthographically, in order, if you're going to try and use orthographic view, you must place everything in comparison to their angular sizes for the observer. So, as an angular size, sorry, no, as an angular size, this would be about right. Maybe a bit smaller, maybe a bit that, right? This would be about right, as an angular size. Right, so when you place that at a distance, right, it's angular size. It's going to, it's going to appear like you're looking. Uh, if you're looking, uh, it's going to appear like you're looking ab uh, above the mountain. If you were to look uh, up above the tower, right, to look at the top of the mountain, you have to look below the top of the tower, right. Now this is not exactly perfect. I might have to move the tower around a bit or whatever to get the, the like for as a to get the distances totally correct and everything to match the angular sizes. Right, but the point being is you get the point, right? When you place these two objects orthographically in comparison to each other as per angular sizes, which is what the observer is going to see, then it proves it's a flat plane because it proves it's perspective. Now, the past, right, my first proof here showing perspective and that there is no perspective accounted for in globe mathematics, none of this perspective, geometric, all this refracted, none of that, not that that refraction exists, we just take the geometric. None of this is perspective, right? None of this is optical. This is all actual, claimed to be actual, right? There's no perspective accounted for in globe maths, right? Everything is about its actual size, kept at its actual size, at a distance and how much drop and hidden amount there is over a geometric curved earth convex surface, right? Whereas in reality, the observer is seeing things in perspective view. So this is the first proof, this basic perspective proof, proves it's flat, right? As I said, showed, there is no perspective in our curve maths. The second one is also using perspective, but it's using this angular size, sizes in comparison to each other. So I'm not comparing them orthographically as this being five times or six times the size of the size of the tower, because that's not what the observer has seen. The observer has not seen this thing that's six times the size of the tower. Uh, from their point of view, even if it is actually six times the size of the tower, they're seeing it as being only as only being um, a, a, a 0.4 degrees smaller than the tower at a distance. That's what they're actually seeing, right? Now, this is going to drive the opposition up the wall. It drove them up the wall the last time, and it, you can't do this. You can't. I can. I can compare angular sizes orthographically. I just did it. Don't tell me I can't do something. No, you can't do it. Because you're idiots. Idiots can't do it because they tell themselves you can't do it. Because to believe you live on a globe in 2024 means you must be stupid. There's, there's no way around it. You must be stupid. And the only way to stop being stupid is stop believing that you're living on a globe. That's it. That's the only way to stop it. Right? You, you can get away from being stupid, but you must first admit that you're being stupid. If you're not able to admit to yourself that you're being stupid then you're going to stay that way. That's just the way it is. So if anyone wants to have a real problem with me, here is the challenge. Right? I'll show you the challenge. Not that it needs one. Right? <coughs> here is an observer right here. Right? <coughs> there is their line of sight above this small tower here. Right? I'm just going to make that a bit. Right? So you can see it when I click on it. So there's the small tower. Right? Their line of sight to the next tower here, right, is there, 
right? The line of sight to the big tower at the background, because of the second tower that's in the way, is here, right? So all they're seeing of, of the second, because of the first tower, all they're seeing of, of the second tower is the top part of the spire, and all they're seeing of the third tower because of the second tower is the top part of its spire, right? Pretty simple. So what about if the perspective, what about if the observer goes directly straight up? Right? Then when they look over the top of the first tower, they're seeing more of the second tower. And because when they're looking over the, up over the top of the second tower, they're seeing more of the third tower. Right? Then when we go up again, right? The observer again is seeing now they have a a, a view downward. To the second tower over the top of the first tower and they're seeing more of the third tower now let's go up again right now they're seeing over the top of this first tower they have an angle downwards that's over half that's about nearly nearly two thirds the way down the second tower and they have an angle of view that's almost uh, that's almost heading for horizontal over the top of the second tower to the third tower now let's go up again right so we don't labor too much two blocks right now their angle of view to the second tower over the top of the first one is to almost at the base of the tower and their angle of view to the third tower over the top of the second one is there right is down halfway down the tower tower sorry so let's go up two more right now their angle of view over the top of the first tower doesn't even they don't see the second tower at all they just see the street in between the two and over the second tower Right, they have an angle of view only about a third of the way up the first tower. So they went from having an angle of view that was a that was blocking their view of the second and third tower, right, due to the first tower being there, right, and the second tower being there, right, that was upwards. Now as they raise an elevation, what happens is the backward the background tower, the big tower, appeared to rise for the observer, while the foreground towers appeared to drop right so when they were uh, not right when they were down here right it was all angles were up the way and things were being blocked because their line of sight was blocked due to visual occultation watch my last video the one just prior to this where i explain that but as the observer rises up right they're not being blocked anymore because their angle of view uh, or because they've raised an elevation, their angle of view is greater. So now they're viewing things differently, right? But that that would mean then when they were down here, that would mean when they were down here, that the reason that they couldn't see the top of this tower, this uh, big tower at the back, wasn't because, uh, uh, was because this tower here in the middle was stopping them. It wasn't due to our curve. It was because this tower here was getting in their way. And the reason they couldn't see all of the second tower is because this tower here, this tower here was getting in their way. So they have, so when they rose in elevation though, that changed everything. Suddenly the tower that seemed biggest for them in, in the foreground, uh, it was suddenly came shrunk in size while the tower in the background raised as they went up in view, went up in elevation. So if we take this to Blackpool, right? Sorry, down here. Here is a tower, right? I'm just going to make this bigger, right? Just to just to show, right? It doesn't matter actually. You can leave it, leave it as is. It don't really matter, right? Point being is that we're looking at the top. Yeah, I, I will. I may leave it as for, for a start. Looking up across uh, to the mountain, right? It appears to us that the mountain is smaller in height to, to in comparison to the tower, right? But what happens is, if the observer raises in elevation, right, I'm just going to remove that one because it's in the way. When the observer raises, one second, I'm just going to make this right. I just want it to be right. Right. Right, that'll do. So I have a base as well. That's all. I just don't want to be messing around. So now I have a base. Right, so here is the mountain for the observer and the tower, right? Here is the line of sight. But as they rise up, right, what will happen is suddenly the mountain will appear to rise up for the observer 
because why is that happening? It's because the observer is rising up. Their angle of view is changing. And if they rise up again, the height of the, the apparent height of the uh, of the mountain in comparison to the tower will change again. Right? It's not that their angle of size not that the angle of size will change, it's the angle of view is changing. Right? The angle of size is not changing, the angle of view is changing. I just have to the only way I can make it higher there is to make it bigger. Right? If they raise up again, right? Once again, the mountain is appears to get higher. Right? So what's actually after happening is what was the case of right, they were down here and the, the tower is blocking their view to the mountain as they go up, right? Suddenly the tower appears to go down and the mountain appears to go up. Right? Now that will happen in reality. And the only way that happens is because of perspective. And perspective is only possible on a flat plane. There is no perspective within a globe within the globe paradigm. People who think that there is don't understand the globe paradigm. When they say flat earthers have said it, no, no, you could have perspective on a globe. That means you don't understand. You're mixing up reality with a paradigm that's purely mathematical, that hijacked perspective. Right? Point being is that the point is much stronger even than that. This is the point. Is that as the observer Right, rises, right? The tower that did appear to them to be higher, because even if we make the two things, let's just say the, we put it like that, right? So the t this is a tower, this is a mountain, right? This tower appears to the observer to be bigger than it really is, because to look towards the mountain, they have to look over the top of the tower. And it appears like the tower is, is from this point up to this point in height, Ap appears to be that way. But when they go up, right, in elevation, suddenly the tower, the top of the tower appears to go down, and to look at the mountain over the top of the tower, they have a downward, ang downward angle to the mountain, whereas it was an upward, now it's a downward angle. Why? Because it's perspective, right? Your angle of view to them is changing, right? And this is the point, when you have visual occultation, you, it appears like something in the foreground is bigger than something in the background, when it's not. And when you rise in elevation, though, rising in elevation removes visual occultation. It's, it's only an effect that can happen when something is of equal height to the eye line, or to the observer eye line, or higher. When it's of equal height or higher, it can happen. When you remove that by moving upwards in elevation, you remove visual occultation. But that also proves that, you're, that the effect you are seeing Right, that the tower didn't appear. The tower here didn't appear to be this height, right, in comparison to the mountain, because the mountain had gone down because of our curve. It wasn't to do with anything to do with our curve. It was got to purely do with perspective, which is proven by raising an elevation, right. And I'm just going to show here, right, almost finished, right. And I have this on 0.25 speed. I'm just going to show this is what happens, right, when you raise an elevation, right. As you can see, this is what happens. As you can see, in reality, when you raise an elevation, right, things that would have appeared in the foreground to be blocked by those trees aren't blocked anymore. Right? So I'll just go back again. About there. Right? One more time. Now, as you can see, the trees here appear to block stuff behind them. Right? I know, I know it's, uh, uh, it's a little bit... The, the camera's moving pretty fast, but you can see, you can't see everything behind the trees. The appear, trees at least appear to get in the way. But as you rise, suddenly what was behind the trees is shown. So it wasn't blocked by our curve. It was just the angle of view, right? And as it goes up and up, in the background, the horizon appears, appears, doesn't actually, appears to rise to a level, right? As you can see, because you're at now visual occultation has been removed because you've rose in altitude. So, if we go back to Blackpool Tower, if, right, if this is our curve, then when you rise vertically, if you take a drone, this is what I said, to Ranty, first day, go with his drone to the same exact observer height and position, as uh, uh, same exact position, as the, as the photographer was in, 
get your drone, hover it at 20 foot elevation, and bring it straight up vertically, right? So go straight up with the drone, right, from that position. And I said, what you will see is that the mountains will appear to rise up in the view and the terror will appear to drop. If the Earth's a globe, that you will not see that. And the reason you won't see that is because if the Earth's a globe and that these mountains are low because they've gone over our curve, then raising an elevation won't appear to, won't cause them to go, st uh, raising straight up in the air with a drone won't cause them to appear to rise back up because perspective is not involved. Not to do with perspective. They're not claiming perspective is the cause of this. They're claiming earth curve was the cause, right? So if it's earth curve, which is geometry, not optical, right? That means that when you raise an altitude with your drone, go straight up from that position with your drone, then those mountains, even though you build a sea further, those mountains will not rise up above the tower for the observer, right? But in reality, they will. And if you want to say they won't, then get the drone, go to that position in the UK, go to where the observer was, hover it at 20 feet above sea level, its elevation, and then bring it straight up. Just set the drone to go straight up. Drones will do it all the time. They go straight up. They're designed to do it. Right? And bring it up nice and slow, and you will see that these mountains, if they appear to rise up and the tower appears to go down, then you know it's perspective. If the mountains don't do that, and stay below the uh, uh, stay below the tower for the observer. Then you can say it's our curve. It's that simple. So what you have to do is debunk the existence of perspective with a drone, which you won't be able to do, which nobody did, which everyone avoided doing in 2021 and 2022 and 2023 and now 2024, and they will continue avoiding it, avoiding it right into 2025, 26, 27. Because they're cowards. When it comes to truth, they all want to say, oh, you have to be true, you have to be honest, blah, 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 until it's time for them to be honest. And then they run. They run. So if it's a globe, then you show it with your drone. Do exactly as I said. And the, remember, the mountains cannot rise, appear to rise above the tower. Because if they do, then you're proving it's purely optical. And exactly as I said, exactly as I said, everything is exactly as I said, the flat earther, and not what you say, the global. Okay, there's the challenge if you have a problem with it. Otherwise, just accept it's flat and shut up. See you later. Thanks.